I'm Al Panasang and welcome to Check Please. This is the show where regular people from all over Chicago recommend and review their favorite restaurants. So this is how the show works. Every week we have three guests. Each recommends his or her favorite spot and the other two go to check them out to see what they think. This week Human Resources Director Crystal Bravoy says if you want a spot with heart and soul, a great vibe anytime, day or night and prices that won't break the bank, she knows just the place. But CPS teacher Katsali Castro says from the fabulous food to the inventive cocktails, her choice does a masterful job of combining old school Mexican flavors with modern techniques. But at first, firefighter Michael Rashid says his red hot selection is a perfect way to spend a special night out. He says from sizzling steaks to sublime service, there's no better way to splurge than at Fulton Markets, Swift and Sons. We are a modern take on a classic Chicago steakhouse. We take liberties with a lot of things on our menu, uh, but we always include the staples. We have all your traditional steakhouse cuts. You'll find enough of your traditional steakhouse sides here, but there's 20% of the menu here that we can really take time and play with. The building itself though, kind of pays homage to the stockyards and the packing plants. The whole building that we're in used to be a coal blocker. It's very modern design in a space that is very respectful to what it once was. You should feel special when you eat at Swift. It's a big restaurant, big personalities here, there's big portions. You should feel special whether you're in here three times a week or whether you're in here once a year. Our staff is so welcoming of everyone and they, I feel like they really put their arms around you. Um, I think the food's pretty good too. So Michael, you say that Swift and Sons is sensational. Tell us why you chose it. Uh, I just, I, I feel that in a city of great steakhouses and amazing restaurants, you can't beat Swift and Sons for a special occasion. Uh, my first time there was when my wife and I got engaged uh, about three years ago. And as far as service and the quality of food, I don't think that it can be beat. Probably three of the top five meals I've ever had in my life have been at Swift and Sons. Oh wow, but you said it yourself, uh, in a city full of steakhouses. So how does Swift and Sons differ from you know, your classic Chicago steakhouse place? I feel where the classic Chicago steakhouse has, you know, the dark colored carpet, the oak wood walls, and the fake fireplace in the corner, <laughs> the waiter with the butcher yeah. coat on. That's I feel that, it, that it's beyond that, where they know that they have a great steak. They know that their food is excellent. And they also know that they have great service. They don't need to prove anything. They treat you well from the second you walk in, and then just the quality of the food is beyond belief. Crystal, what do you think? I thought that Swift and Sons was completely magical. I, I thought it was sophisticated, sexy, um, and I like a sexy restaurant. <laughs> um, I thought that the food was special in the sense that the flavor profiles had layers that were unexpected. Um, I started off with the mushroom ravioli that was on the top of like a lemony cream that was just a special pop in your mouth and I had um, a lovely kind of Thai style lobster soup and I've been to Thailand and the flavors were spot on it, just, it took me back. Okay. So, Thai soup is not something that you get at a steakhouse. No. no. <laughs> I was also surprised by that they had on the they recommended the rock shrimp tempura mm -hmm. and that was that was really was delicious. I, had that I, I was surprised by that. I was <laughs> That's okay. one of our main, when my <laughs> wife and I go there, the rock shrimp tempura is one of those things where when we're walking in, mm -hmm. it's all right, we're getting the rock shrimp tempura and what else? Steakhouse, you gotta have steak. What's your go-to steak? I don't think that you can go wrong with any steak on the menu. Usually it's the ribeye, but lately I've been a porterhouse fan and they have a 48 ounce porterhouse that's for the table, which they deconstruct, they cut it, so everybody gets a taste of both the filet and the strip. That's gonna be my go-to from now on. And what about sides? So they have these potatoes and they're like a fingerling potato tossed with a ranch dressing that were I amazing. Like ranch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I left knowing I had to go back. Um, like for the sides, we also had the mushroom side. 
looked so good and I had the salmon and my husband had ordered the surf and turf with like a bone marrow on the side and I feel like the servers were really thoughtful about like how the food was coming up and like um, explaining everything as it came out. They also took some extra steps to say like, hey, like if you're gonna order the bone marrow, you're gonna want some bread and I'm like, yes. <laughs> I'm like sopping up like all the like wonderful like bone marrow. Um, for an appetizer, I also ordered the tomato and burrata salad, and they were like, oh yeah, like we split it into two dishes for you. I felt like really well taken care of, and like the whole experience was just quite the experience. I left knowing like, yeah, we had to go back. They also have a dessert cart that comes out that looks yes. like a little train on a mm -hmm. cart. It was lighted cool. and made out of wood and they had just levels of things you could choose from for just you know a few dollars so you could kind of mix and match mm -hmm. your desserts which was extra special. And they have a bar cart as well yes. that had a really lovely mixologist who rolled the cart up to the table. Something I'd never seen before, really special touch. Part of a great steakhouse experience is theater. You want mm -hmm. the show. I had a show. <laughs> I, they actually they have a, a an actual show, I believe, that you yeah. can purchase. It's but the guy that goes around and does so like, like a, yes. yeah. he does that, like, yeah. have you had that before? I have the oh, night that my wife and got really the, the night that my wife and I got engaged, Swift and Sons decided to take it upon themselves to pay for the paid magic show, oh. which oh. I'm not easily impressed, but <laughs> my wife word for word walked out and said, that was real. So what did he do? Like, did he... It was card tricks. He made it the was... bill disappear. I wish. <laughs> I wish. That would have been an even better trick. But there were card tricks and, and different just sleight of hand stuff that was, it was very good. <laughs> All right, Michael, you pick Swift and Sum. Sum it up for us. Uh, definitely a top-notch steakhouse in a city full of great steakhouses, uh, built for special occasions, amazing service, amazing food, amazing cocktails. Can't wait to go back. All right, Katsali. Wonderful for a special occasion. Would definitely go back there, even for not so special occasions. Uh, and it's also in a really great neighborhood to do things afterwards. And Crystal. Swift and Sons is a sophisticated, classy restaurant that I would love to return to with special touches that make your night memorable. All right. Well, you can try the steaks and much more at Swift and Sons, 1000 West Fulton, 312-733-9420. They're open for dinner every day. Reservations are accepted, and the average tab for person without drinks is $75. Logan Square is filled with interesting restaurants and Katsali Castro says a relative newcomer is at the head of the class. She says for a colorful, delectable experience, join her and Chef Diana Davila at Mitokaya. One thing that was really important to me was to have an open kitchen so I could kind of see everything that's happening and to really just make it seem like a small, something that you could feel like in Latino households, everybody kind of gathers around the kitchen. So I feel like it really kind of embodies that. And I wanted to showcase the love that we have for the nostalgic dishes. What would it be like to grow up as a, the flavors that you're eating growing up as a Mexican kid? and showcasing just how vast the Mexican cuisine is to show that it's uh, one of the biggest, fattest cuisines of the world. To be any kind of good artist, you know, you, you, you have to put yourself out there. You have to, you have to give it your everything. Everything has like a little sprinkle of 
Yeah, your, your soul. My favorite compliment, oh, I know they don't like this, is like that uh, the food reminds them of their mother or their grandmother. I think that's always my favorite. It always, it always just makes me cry and we're like, yes, you know, that's what I wanted. So, Kitsali, you say that Mitakaya is memorable. Tell us why you chose it. Yes. Um, so, I am Mexican. I was born in Mexico City, and I get cravings. I get antojos, and that's what Mitakaya antojería is. It's those cravings that you get as, like, a Latino, a Latina. They have so many ingredients in that restaurant that are, like, very Mexican that is really hard to find on any menu anywhere else, and that's something I love. So to say that Chef Diana Davila is passionate about Mexican food would be a wide understatement. Wild understatement. <laughs> <laughs> she wanted to create a space that would be like if you went to somebody's home in Mexico and you're mm -hmm. eating what they would eat. Would you agree with this? I would definitely agree. There are some things that like took me back and I was like, my grandma used to make this and I'm like oh. um and so I I have a heart like people have a hard time getting me to go to Mexican restaurants and I'm like my mom cooks better or like my grandma cooks better and I went here kind of like begrudgingly at first but one of my friends was like no like it's really great try it and I went and I've been going back ever since Michael, you got the order to go to Mitokaya, your first time to Logan Square. My first time to Logan Square, which will definitely not be my last time to Logan Square. Such a <laughs> high energy, beautiful neighborhood. I cannot wait to go back. So we started off with the guacamole, which was, to me, it was a little bland. It needed something. We had chips and salsa, which was amazing. And then we moved into like the small plate thing where we had different kinds of tacos and a steak burrito, which I thought I had the best steak burrito in the world. This was like <laughs> above and beyond, melt in your mouth steak, best burrito I've ever had. But the, the, the star yeah. of the show was, and I, I never expected as a lover of barbecue to have barbecue ribs at a Mexican restaurant that blew me away that I, can't, I cannot wait to eat those again. I've had cravings of those barbecue ribs since that day. And that's the Mexican phrase, like, que se te antoja, like, what are you craving right now? And I'm just like, oh, like that burrito is, I dream about that burrito every yes. once in a while, yeah. I, I have a dream too, I'm sorry to cut you off. <laughs> I dreamed about the tres leches cake that was soaked in the coconut milk. Yes. Oh my Un goodness. Unreal. They get that from Christopher's Bakery in Pilsen. Oh. Um, so it's the Christopher's Tres Leches, and that is just like such a staple bakery and I also love that like Chef Gianna like also supports local Mexican food and businesses as well. Um, I went on a Sunday uh, mm -hmm. where they had a, a more limited menu but I, I think that that was by design so there's a I think it's called Domingo Familia. Yeah, Diana has two children and she's mm -hmm. very passionate about keeping that work-life balance and she spends time with her family on Sundays. Though they had a limited menu it was really special because the food you ate it family style mm -hmm. um, and I had the cochinita pibble which I think is pork shoulder marinated to the gods. Um, it was it was totally tender, totally melting your mouth, and the portions were amazing. <laughs> what about the bebidas, the drinks? <laughs> we had several mezcal margaritas, which was so refreshing and so yeah. good. So my favorite is the chicana. It's this beautiful purple color. The Doña Irma is also like beautifully garnished. There's just like really great flavors. Crystal, what was the crowd like? So the crowd at Mitsukaya was very um, energetic, lots of talking, lots of groups. People looked like they were having a really great time. My one note would probably just be that I didn't really see myself res reflected in the space. Um, and so I generally look for that when I go to places. Um, but from the moment I walked through the door, I did feel, of course, absolutely welcomed. So um, I did enjoy that, that, that they made me feel like they, they wanted me there and they wanted to see me. Uh, Katsali, yes. uh, yeah, this is a very personal project for Diana. Is that reflected in the decor of the restaurant? Oh, for sure. I feel like that... Um, in contrast, I feel very reflected there. Um, I, I think that it's probably one of the truest like representations of like modern Mexico. And it's super eclectic, super fun, very colorful. It's just like really beautiful to just see like so many like Mexican artifacts around.
All right, Katsali, you recommended Mutakaya. Sum it up for us. Mitokaya is a very authentic, very real Mexican place serving wonderful heightened dishes that will surprise you at all times. Yeah. Okay. Crystal? Mitakaya is um, thoughtful, elevated uh, Mexican fare um, in a very uh, cute uh, space that I would definitely return to should I be local. Okay, and Michael? A uh, beautiful restaurant in a great area with great outdoor seating. Uh, excellent, excellent Mexican food uh, done to the 10th the degree. All right. Well, you can try the guacamole and much more for yourself at Mutokaya Antojeria, 2800 West Logan Boulevard, 872-315-3947. They're open for dinner Tuesday through Sunday. Reservations are accepted and the average tap per person without drinks is $35. Crystal Brayboy knows that one of the secrets to a successful restaurant is making the customers feel at home. She says there's one spot above all others where she feels that warmth every time she visits. It's in Madison and it's called Hidden Mana Cafe. We serve Cajun and Creole food. We just play with food. Real estate got us into the business, got us into the restaurant business. We bought the building, we rehabbed, then we were going to lease it out. But then we were kind of spiritually moved to run it ourselves. So that's how we got in the business. My grandmother taught me a lot of cooking my, between my grandmother and my mother. I like to play with food, so we just try different recipes and if they work, they stick. And we do everything from scratch, so it takes us a little longer here at times because we do it from scratch. It's not sitting back there waiting on you to order it. What well, we found by doing it that way, the quality it's of the plate better. is much better. The, the flavor is even different when you do it that way, so we kind of stick with that. <laughs> we just want them to feel rested and, re and, and rejuvenated and full. So Crystal, you say that Hidden Mana makes you smile. Tell us why you chose it. I chose Hidden Mana Cafe because I believe that they think soul first and food second, um, though the food is great. Um, I enjoy a space where I can walk in and feel like there's someone waiting for me. They're waiting for me to come. They're waiting for me to come back and they greet me with a lot of love. Welcome to Hidden Mana Cafe. And I think that Hidden Mana gets that so right. All right. Katali, what'd you think? Yes. Oh, it was wonderful. I got to go there on a day where they had live music and it was somewhere between like smooth jazz and like live WGCI and I was just like loving the whole experience. I definitely like taking a look and like people watching and everything. It definitely looked like an older crowd and um, a lot of married couples and everyone was just really enjoying the live music when we were there. Michael, another first for you. You went to Madison. Uh, yes, it was my first time in Sending you all in, over the new places. In, in yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's not a place where you would say, let's go out for a night on the town in Madison or Madison. So you, you pull up to this, what cute, like, what looks like a cute little house. It was, it's yeah. almost like uh, somebody took it a Victorian house from the late 1800s and turned it into a beautiful restaurant. Yeah. And it, in fact, it is a landmark. The owners, uh, Glennis and Mark, uh, were going to rehab and turn to a coffee shop. And then his family's like, well, what food are you going to serve? And Glennis's family is from New Orleans. And so it ended up falling to like, you know, sort of a Creole flair to it. Mm -hmm. So how'd you think, how'd you find the food? Oh, uh, the food was excellent. We had fried green tomatoes as a starter. Um, the uh, entrees that we had were macaroni and cheese with a fried chicken breast that was delicious homemade quality mac and cheese with like a perfectly cooked 
fried chicken breast on top that wasn't greasy at all, but still had great crunch. You know, the, the, they do have a lot of secrets for their cooking, and Crystal says their waffle, uh, the fried chicken and waffles, there's some secret in there. There is some secret <laughs> in that chicken and waffle. There is something very sugary, cinnamony um, that is in that waffle batter that just makes it pop in your mouth. And I'm glad that you brought up this perfectly cooked chicken breast because they're their batter on, I mean, you, you're going to be on your plate, like, you know, getting the crumbs absolutely. because it's absolutely wonderful. All right, Katsali, what did you eat? Um, I also had the fried green tomatoes, and I just feel like that's something wherever you get, like, access to Southern food, you're like, yes, this. Um, I, we also shared three big entrees. Um, we got to have, like, a pasta, and we tried the hidden manna, like, specials, and those were also really delicious. So my go-to items, I definitely go to hidden manna often for breakfast. So um, I always have two entrees at a time. And I have the shrimp and grits. I think the shrimp and grits are the best um, in the area. They're creamy. Um, the, the sauce and the andouille, like chicken sausage they put in it is amazing. The peppers, onions. Um, and I also always have the chicken and waffles. I think that the maple cream sauce that you put on top of the chicken and waffles is so special. So you don't use syrup. Um, it's just this creamy maple based. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you if you go, just slather it on and, and you'll leave a happy camper. I feel like we went at the perfect time, which was like 11 o'clock a.m. So we had access to a breakfast menu and to the lunch menu. And we, uh, it was very, very good. It was, it, it was, it's the food that you want to eat on a rainy day and then go home and take a nap. Comfort food for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I, it feels like I'm walking into my friend's house and her mom is gonna feed me until I'm stuffed. So Michael, um, there's a sign in the restaurant that says, we hug. <laughs> Absolutely, and they, that is not false advertising. Uh, from the second we walked in, we felt like we were part of the family there. Um, at one point, we, we had our eight week old son there and the, uh, uh, one of the one of the servers at the restaurant, it might have been the owner, heard that he was fussing a little bit, decided to pick him up and make sure that he was okay. And it was just one of those touches where we felt like we were part of the family while we were eating there. Yeah, the owners are ever present, which is lovely. Um, Glenn do you is get hugs? In my, oh, I get hugs. <laughs> I, I do get hugs, and who doesn't return for hugs, right? You get hugs and great food. I don't yeah. think you can beat it. All right, Crystal, you picked Hidden Mana. Sum it up for us. Hidden Mana is a restaurant that you can visit when you want to go and feel fed and loved on. <laughs> and um, it's great for breakfast, especially um, maybe after church. <laughs> Michael? Uh, it's an off the beaten path restaurant um, that, I, that I would go back to if I was in the area, but if it was down the street from my house, I would eat there once a week. And Kitsali? Uh, Hidden Mana is a really great place to get some soul food, to get that comfort food, if you can make the trip out there. All right. Well, you can try the fried green tomatoes and much more for yourself at Hidden Mana, 3613 West 216th Street in Madison, 708-248-5571. Open for breakfast and lunch seven days a week, also for dinner on the weekends. Reservations are accepted for large parties, and the average tap per person without drinks is $20. So on this week's show, we feature Swift and Sons on Fulton, Mitokai and Logan Square, and Hidden Mana in Madison. Let's recap what our guests had to say. First, we headed down Fulton Market and swung by Swift and Sons. Michael recommends it for its updated steakhouse experience with stellar food, service, and style. Kitsali says it's great for special occasions in a fun and vibrant neighborhood. Crystal loved the sophisticated, sexy atmosphere and memorable food. Next, we went down Logan Boulevard and tried out Mitokaya. Kitsali recommends it for its authentic and craveable Mexican cuisine. Crystal enjoyed the elevated dishes and cocktails in a cute, colorful space. Michael loved the exciting neighborhood and the excellent food and drink.
Lastly, we took a trip to 216th Street and stopped in at Hidden Mana Cafe. Crystal recommends it for delicious Cajun dishes, family atmosphere, and warm hugs. Michael appreciated the welcoming and attentive service and tasty comfort food. Katsali says it's worth the trip for the fun vibe and fried green tomatoes. Well, we've had just a wonderful time this week, and I'd like to thank my guests, Crystal Brayboy, Castali Castro, and Michael Rashid. Join us next week for three new guests recommending three of their favorite restaurants right here on Chuck Please. I'm Alpha Singh, and I'll see you then. Well, cheers. Cheers. For more information about the restaurants featured on Chuck Please, go to wttw.com slash Chuck Please.